Hey there, everybody. Pete here from Comic Book Geezers alongside Kirk. We've got a cool little tribute video for you here today. So uh, some of you may know we lost Frank Thorne uh, just about a month ago. Frank, of course, a, a very popular artist who uh, worked on all sorts of cool stuff like way back in the day, but he really made his name working on the Red Sonja comic for Marvel Comics. And uh, he left us uh, March 7th, 2021 at the age of 90 under somewhat mysterious circumstances. He and his wife both passed away on the, on the same day. Not a lot of information on what went on there, but more importantly, we're going to kind of take a look at uh, some of his classic stuff. And Kirk is a big fan. So Kirk's got a little show and tell for everybody today to kind of uh, pay a little tribute to Mr. Frank Thorne. So Kirk, take it away. As you said, I, I love Frank Thorne. Um, I, it's bummed me out because I've actually, last couple of years, I've tried to see where he was coming out to a convention or something. Just never got a chance to meet the guy. Um, heard a lot of great stories about him. Heard he was a bit of a character. Um, he looks but, like. Uh, oh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, and, and it's funny, like, there's certain things, like, when you hear about him, you're like, wow, all right, you know what? He's a bit of a bohemian. Uh, definitely enjoyed his life. Um, and again, 90's not a bad deal. I mean, if no, I could find a good on, long life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, from what I gather, he was up and running until recently. I don't know whether, you know, what, what occurred. But 90's not too bad. Um, as I said, I love this stuff. Uh, and I, I pulled some stuff from my collection, just kind of showcasing. I've edited some of this stuff to avoid anything too a little risque. Because later in his career, he kind of got a little bit more interesting so um <laughs> but but, but we'll, we'll start with the early stuff because it's always better to start there and kind of work our way up um i don't know do you do you have some stuff to show or are you just uh it's all you I, I have a couple red sonias but i figure you got everything that i have so uh, i figure i leave it up to you well i think i'd start with the mighty samson which is a book he did for gold king which is a I so know he he helped create this oh, wow. yeah it's 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 it's, it's uh, this book only lasted like thirty three issues or something. Um, it's one of those futuristic like. It's a very weird book. It's kind of like a barbarian in the future, and he's you know it's it. But it's a good run, and it 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 was you know you're talking this is old Gold Key, so I'm thinking late sixties. Yeah. Um, that was uh, Gold Key was a comic company that didn't last too long, um, but they put out some good stuff and. Uh, I've got two of the old um, Samson books that he did for them. Um, yeah, I, yeah that's, said, big, that's big firmly family. in the sci-fi fantasy realm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He did He did uh, Tomahawk 2, which was an old Western book that he did for DC. He did a bunch of issues of that. I got rid of my stuff for that because, you know, you can only have so many comic books. And uh, over the years, I've thinned out certain things. And that was one of the sets I kind of... Um, but great stuff well drawn he also was one of the guys we had talked before about atlas comics yep. uh he was one of the guys who signed over he did the the uh first issue of cougar the cougar <laughs> my favorite title um that um you know is great great cover um he also was working on their their army uh book which was the blazing battle tale starring sergeant hawk again great stuff um good stories i said Atlas stuff just good in general, but it wasn't until he got to Red Sonia that he really blew up. And the weird part is that you know he started it started with Marvel feature, and so I've only pulled a couple of these because I'm like, you know, but these are great covers. We did a whole episode on Marvel features recently, so I'm not gonna get into it too much. But if you can see, I bought actually a new copy of this, so uh, that's a great because the yeah. last time, uh, it's my favorite cover he did, and I was like. Why do I have such a crappy copy of it in my collection? I was like, I need to, I need to get a better copy. So I bought that. That once that finished, it, it, it's Marvel feature was done with Red Sonia. They tried to spin that out to the Marvel two and one, um, but then they spun this out because at this point Red Sonia was doing pretty well. It was selling well. It was it was holding out. Um, and again, he did a whole bunch of covers. This lasted for about fifteen issues. Now, the weird thing was this became like a huge, like pop culture thing where he, he started doing like Red Sonja, a lookalike contest, 
and um, you know a lot of uh, Wendy Pin, who who helped create ElfQuest, used to go around with him dressed up as Red Sonia, and I've got pictures, so don't worry. But uh, <laughs> but uh, this is all like you know. He he after this character, he started really doing more adult-oriented comic books. He he had switched over. He was doing a strip in Playboy. He was doing more um, stuff that was not going to be sold by Marvel. No, or yeah. DC. He took a liking, um, I think, to drawing scantily clad women. I think, and in some yes. cases, extremely scantily clad. Right. Not clad at all, right? <laughs> yes. So about maybe, I think it was like, what is this? This was, I don't have the year on this. But anyway, what he got is he, about 15 years ago, uh, Arrow's Comics put out the erotic works of Frank Thorne, um, which kind of covers his history of what he was working on. And I mean, obviously, like all these characters looked a lot like Red Sonia. I'm going to be honest. He was... I, I'm surprised Marvel Comics, Robert E. Howard's uh, lawyers, nobody caught up with him. But he, he um, you know, he did he did that. He he started out with moonshine mixed jugs. <laughs> I do not I do not come up with this stuff, guys. All right. So, uh, and this was actually a running strip that he he did. He did. Um, and then moonshine McJugs. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you never thought you're going to say that name tonight, right? Um, he oh, he did God. Lana, who is another. Now, I've edited these for, for all <laughs> he's doing, as you can see. Because, because again, you had to really watch out. Um, and then he, you know, actually, I got. Uh, we we're going we're gonna to get all the viewers are going to be posting comments. Kirk, show the boobs, show the boobs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We will not. We're, we're keeping this PG at least 13. All right. Um, but then, but then, um, like the interesting part too is he, he, the final issue of this run is really kind of funny because it gives a whole rundown of the Red Sonia shows, which were these traveling convention shows that he did, where he would go out with these women dressed up like Red Sonia, and he'd dress up like the wizard, and he'd do a like a look-alike contest. And in here, they give the whole history of it. And like, like some of these women were burlesque dancers and such. And he's just, and it's, it's great because you hear like Gene Cullen was there, Roy Thomas, all these guys from Marvel Comics, of course, were out there to help, you know, support the, the company and all that. And they're all going for the, the reviews and stuff. And it's hysterical. And, and you can even see here in the back, they, they got photos in here of him dressed up as the wizard doing the, the, um, the reviews um really how do you get away with this i'm just like mind-boggling you know i'm just like this man had had this this was his job i'm like I, I, you know i go to my boss i'm like dude i need like you know take the day off to get my wife to the airport or something you know you're like sitting there talking about that this guy's like look i'm just driving around with these redheads you know dressed <laughs> up like a wizard so, i don't know but he did that but the other thing he's been doing over the last like 15 years or so or 20 years was, you know, he did a lot of portfolios and stuff, which I have won. Um, Cause actually I was trying to get some original art from him and it's just, the pieces I always found were way too expensive, but this portfolio actually wasn't so bad. Um, and you see, again, I've edited it for, <laughs> to make this viewing safe for all. Um, and, and he said he did a lot of really kind of odd stuff that's, you know, but um, I'll give you guys a chance to look at this because it's this is kind of hard because, you know, for some reason, I don't think my wife wants this hanging up in the living room. So <laughs> I never get to show this to anybody. So you buy this stuff and you're like, wow, this is so cool. And then you're like, and your wife looks at you like, I don't get it. But anyway, <laughs> so um but as I said, the nice thing was he did he did actually sign this portfolio. So, um, and and this one, this is kind of like my favorite. But it, it's kind of like, but it's it, again, it's you know he and he did what was it? He did uh, fifteen hundred of these, and then he you know, um, and he signed one plate in the book, so you get you get an autograph and all that 
as I said, as close as I ever got to seeing the guy. But I mean, what what a what a great guy, you know? Like what? A, well, I don't know, you know, just just kind of a crazy life because the stories he tells, like the stuff I've caught on, he just kind of partied. Like you know, it was the mid seventies. He's driving around with these redheads. I'm thinking. God, I'm coming back in my next life. I want to come back as Frank Thorne. But anyways, <laughs> come on. Um, they talk about milk and a character, right? I mean, he basically ran with Red Sonia in various different guises going forward for the rest of his life, basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he I, made money doing I, it. He did. Wow. And, and, and the funny thing was, Stan Lee supported like the whole thing. He Stan Lee quotes on the back here. He says he he thinks that uh you know the connection between frank thorne created sonia even though sonia was technically robert e howard's character and other people created he wasn't the first artist even to portray her no but, no it was barry windsor smith yeah but yeah but he came up with the tin bikini which i got to admit you know what that's the look that she's known for you know so it was as it's, it's, it's a I was reading uh, an issue of Conan recently, an older issue. I, th I think it was in um, maybe the 50s or something like that, where, you know, Red Sonia makes another appearance for like two issues or whatever. And Conan remarks, she's, you know, she's fighting some guy or whatever and kills kills the foe or whatever. And Conan is just kind of watching. Then he goes, he goes, I'm amazed you can fight that well dressed like that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, hey, it is. <laughs> And I'm like, well, that's what we're all thinking, but not that we're minding it, right? I remember being a little kid, we'd see in Red Songs, like, whoa, look at that, you know? She's certainly not dressed like uh, Sue Richards or, uh, you know, the Wasp or forget that. Look at that. That's a woman, right? Yeah, right? I, I got to admit, right? Why on earth would anybody think they're battle ready in a tin bikini? I mean, I, I don't know. As you said, I aesthetically very pleasing, but I'm going to say, practical mm, not so not much so but <laughs> <laughs> very cool well thanks for sharing all that it's, it's pretty it's pretty neat i and i still think you need to convince your wife that at least one of those prints needs to go on the wall somewhere yeah yeah right. good luck with that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't happen in my house either so you know whatever <laughs> we can dream you, you got it yeah. a nice nice little right. portfolio right that's that's better than nothing so yeah. well now now that we're done you can or we will be done you can go take those uh, little pieces of tape off the uh the, the you know yeah my little sticky uh, notes that are hiding all that the, the bits and pieces there yeah bits and pieces the uh <laughs> the, the nasty bits well not nasty pretty. yeah the nasty bits <laughs> <laughs> So there you have it, everybody. A little tribute to the artwork and life of Mr. Frank Thorne, a definite uh, interesting character who brought some cool creations and uh, had a thing for drawing the ladies, right? And that's yeah. made a career on that. You know, some guys have a career, make a career drawing the Hulk or Spider-Man. He made a career out of drawing a pretty hot redheaded barbarian, <laughs> right? Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching uh make sure if you're watching and you haven't subscribed please do so click that uh, notification bell as well so you'll get an update and an email every time we post a video remember we're here every wednesday and friday uh we've got uh, plenty more episodes coming uh while bill will be back once again we'll be seeing kirk again soon and uh i am pete of course so for kirk take care everybody have a good one <laughs>